Well, good morning and welcome to worship at Emmanuel High Church from wherever you might be this morning for a time of worship. I'm so happy that you've joined us in spirit. Today is February 6th, the fifth Sunday of Epiphany. Before we begin, here are our announcements. And before I forget, I'm going to just call on Ruth. Two years. So we're glad you're here to thank in person today. So, okay. Lots of opportunities to get involved still. Missions is inviting all to participate in the micro pantry project. The confirmands, along with Art and a few other uh, men, are going to be building uh, the micro pantry uh, over the next several weeks. Um, we still need folks to help us with filling the micro pantry and um, also publicizing the micro pantry. So if you want to get involved, just tap me on the shoulder right after church and I will sign you up. Also, we are going to be starting, we hope to be starting in uh, on Veterans Day, a healing circle for vets. Uh, which is just a listening circle. There's training uh, from Reverend John Schloop. You might remember he spoke to us during our Veterans Day celebration the year before last. And um, so he is willing to train us and um, we are looking for a couple of volunteers that might be willing to train and facilitate this very needed uh, listening circle. There's uh, Trinity Church has one, uh, the Talmadge Church has one and several other churches. So if you're interested in being a facilitator to help our vets that are struggling, um, come and see me and uh, I will get you more information. Also, uh, if you haven't noticed, there are still a couple of these books that are on the back table, including this one. This one is free for the taking. This has been written by Reverend Dr. Uh, John Schloop, who is the uh, founder of Warrior's Journey Home. So if you'd like a better idea of what the program is all about, I recommend you pick up his book. You can read this in an afternoon. It's very readable and not very long. So I hope that some of you will consider helping our vets out by being a facilitator in our Warriors Journey Home listening circle. Let's see, we need door monitors. Um, we lock the doors uh, about 10 minutes after worship starts just to keep everyone safe. Uh, if you are willing to sign up and occasionally sit in the back uh, by the back door to let folks in that are arriving late, there's a sign up by, uh, by the door. Also, uh, our care ministry is looking for people who are willing to send cards, make meals, and uh, run errands, drive people to their appointments. So Vaughn, raise your hand. Talk to Vaughn sign, or sign up by the back door if you're willing to help. Confirmation, just a reminder, is today right after worship. Um, on the 27th of February, we will be installing new consistory members and new elders. And mark your calendar for March 1st, which is Mardi Gras Day. We are going to have a drive through pancake supper that night. I hope you all will plan to eat pancakes. That's the tradition to eat the day before Ash Wednesday. Uh, and help out our food pantry. It's going to be free. Just drive through, pick up your pancakes and sausage. And we're um, asking everyone to drop off an item for our micro pantry. So uh, if you want to enjoy having traditional pancakes and help out the micro pantry, 4, 4.30 to six on the first, on March 1st, which is a Tuesday. 
Also, if you haven't heard, uh, Ralph Leninger has moved to Doylestown Health Care Center. Visitors are welcome. He's in the memory care um, side of it. So uh, he would love cards, calls, or visits. Are there any other announcements for the good of the group? All right. Let's take a moment now to move into our time of worship and prepare our hearts and minds. Each week, we prepare ourselves by reminding our hearts and our bodies and our minds that even though some of us are still physically in our homes, we're now gathering as the body of Christ and entering onto holy ground. Let's put our right hand on our heart and our left hand on our bellies. And then take a slow breath in through our nose to the count of four. And then breathe out through our mouths to the count of more than four. Let's take another breath in, breathing in God's presence that's all around us. And breathing out any leftover stress or anxiety we have. Let's remember that no matter where we physically are, that God is with us, surrounding us with his spirit. Let's pray, shall we? Loving God, we come to you this morning seeking your wisdom and blessing. As we gather this day, O oh God, though we might be physically scattered, we're united in spirit. Renew us, we pray. Anoint us with your spirit. Amen. Let's now step into worship as we bring in the light of Christ and listen to our prelude. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. It is by grace that we are who we are. Keep 
It is by God's grace that we can become followers. It is with God's grace that we become who we might be. People who step out in faith, sharing the good news generously. may be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer. Holy God, we gather to sing your praise and hear your word. Speak to us now that we may be wise enough to perceive your call. Strengthen us now that we may be brave enough to answer when you call. Guide us now that we may follow where you would have us to go.
Do not be afraid. Christ has called. Christ has redeemed us. And Christ will save us all. Amen. Good morning. Today in our lesson, we're talking about fishing and Art, I apologize to you. They asked to bring fishing gear for my, I had no fishing gear. This was the best I could do with some sticker fish. My, the ranks of my fishing were, Brad a long time ago had a bait and tackle shop. And when he closed it out, I bought ice fishing poles tied magnets on them and that's what we used in the classroom to fish for paper fish until I think when I was done I brought them to the yard sale and I think you bought them didn't you Art? So Art's now using them for their true but and I even Wednesday I was up at Rachel's babysitting and Calvin had his fish with his magnet so that's my area of fishing. But anyways in our lesson in the story you're going to hear today Jesus calls fishermen and he calls them and goes out. And of course, they weren't pleasure fishing or fishing for paper fish. That was their business. And the story has that he calls them fishers of men. And as soon as I read this, I thought about the song that I learned as a child. And every some of my age are all nodding their head. I wasn't going to make you suffer with my voice. So I found it on line. So I'm going to have Sandy hold it up here and I'll step over and you can follow the motions with me. And if you want to sing along with it, but I didn't want to make you hear just my voice. Pete's again, and I wasn't good. But in that, I'm sure a lot of you remember that was one. A lot of the stories of the Bible have been written in song, and I think that's how, as soon as I hear a lot of these Bible stories, I come back to the songs that I learned back as a child that helped me learn those. And how many of you remember that song? A lot of you, good. I hope some of the young ones, I hope we keep. I, when they get back in Sunday school, we're going to sing it again. So I'm hoping that the young can learn that as well, because it's very important. And I, as I was listening to this and looking it up, I thought of the hear Christ calling, come on to me and I'll give you rest. And I'm thinking that's probably right now with all the pandemic and me in the two years, that's something that we need to have rest in Christ, that Christ is here. He's following us through this. And that we know that we have the faith that if we follow him, we will have rest. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, just as Jesus called his early disciples to fish for people, he has called us to tell others about his love so that we might bring them into the kingdom. Help us to be faithful to become fisher of people too. Amen. The children can come to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Our first lesson today comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Listen as the Spirit speaks to her church. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook as the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is, is blotted out. Then they heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and say to this people, keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate. Until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. May God bless the reading and hearing of the holy word. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Listen now to the word for God's people. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, 
he fell down at Jesus's knees saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word for God's people. May God bless all who hear it, who keep it, and who share it. Let's pray. May the words of my lips and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, nobody's on top of the world every day. Everybody has their ups and downs. Sometimes the world is sweet and then sometimes it's sour. Sometimes life moves along quite briskly and we accomplish what we set out to do and we meet our personal goals. And then there are other times when we just get stuck. We look failure in the face day after day. And we don't know how to get out of what we don't know how we got into in the first place. And life comes to a halt. Today's gospel le reading is about three discouraged men. Four, actually, if you count Andrew, who appears in other accounts of this story. They were fishermen. And as um, Helen said, they weren't recreational fishermen, but workers whose families went hungry if there wasn't a catch. Jesus had met them before when they were associated with John the Baptist. In fact, he had been to Simon Peter's house and cured his mother-in-law of a high fever. But it was a very bad day for the four fishermen. They had fished all night and still caught nothing. And now it was morning, the morning after a long, long night of failure. And the men were washing out their nets so they'd be ready for the next night's work. And there was a crowd on the beach near where they were working, a big crowd, and they were listening to Jesus pressing in on him. So Jesus is in the water out away from the crowd and suddenly he steps onto Simon's boat and he says, put out a little way from the shore, Peter. And so Peter does as he's asked. And from the boat, Jesus continues to teach the crowds. And finally, he's done and the crowds start to dissipate. And then Jesus turns over to Simon and he says, put into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Well, can you imagine it was really quite an audacious thing for Jesus to say? After all, he was just a landlubber. He was a carpenter. And to tell professional fishermen how to do their business, that was quite audacious. And Peter answers Jesus immediately by explaining the facts of life to him. He says, look. It's not going to do any good. We've worked all night and have caught nothing. There's no point to what you're asking. Have you ever been there? You've done your best. You've worked really hard and still the results are zero. And an important relationship goes sour. There's nothing you can do or your marriage dissolves. You've tried everything, but you can't save it a project at work you've worked upon for months just doesn't come together. And the harder you try to make it fit, the less it works. Have you ever been in a place where all common sense just says, give up? I have. And the last thing you wanna hear, the very last thing you need to hear when you're in this position is somebody to come along and go, hey, all you need to do is just try harder. Just do it again, one more time. Peter and Andrew, James and John, you know, they weren't stupid men. They knew the lake, 
the ledges where the fish congregated. They knew exactly where to go and the kind of weather you had to have to bring in a good catch. I'm sure Art can relate to this. He doesn't need me to tell him not to go ice fishing, which I do every time I see him. But he's like, hey, you're a landlubber. What do you know about it? You're a pastor. The families had been working at that lake for generations. They knew the time to catch fish. They knew where to catch fish. And they had gone fishing at the right time and at the right place and still nothing. But try over there, Jesus says, over there in the deep water, let your nets down for a catch. Master, we've worked all night long, Peter replies. We've done everything that we should have done, everything that we were taught to do by our fathers and their fathers before them. And still, we've caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I'll let my nets down. My kids say that sometimes to me, you know, it's like I've done it before, mom, but just to uh, keep you quiet, I'll do it one more time so you can see it doesn't work. Why Simon agrees to roll out into the deeper water, we don't know. Perhaps he did so just because he was starting to learn to trust Jesus. Perhaps he did it like my kids do, just to humor him. Perhaps though it was something in Jesus's tone of voice. But whatever the reason, Peter agrees to do what Jesus asked of him. You know the story from here. They threw the nets out from his boat and gathered such a great haul of fish that the nets began to break. Indeed, they caught so many fish that when John and James came alongside and helped the boats, that the boats also began to sink. It was an amazing catch a catch made in deep water, a catch taken where there should have been no catch, a catch taken at the time of day when there should have been no catch. I know that today is the day when most preachers talk about how we're called to be soul catchers, how like Simon Peter and Andrew and James and John, we're called to leave everything behind all of our ordinary concerns and worries and frets and cares and focus on winning people over for God. And that is a good message. Don't get me wrong. But in, instead of focusing on that message, I want you to look today at the catch of fish and the facts behind it and what the whole episode might suggest about how we should live our lives. I want you to remember something today. I want you to remember that Peter said to Jesus at the first, when he said, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. What Simon is saying to Jesus, in effect, is, hey, I know my business. We've tried it. We worked all night and nothing happened. So what's the point? And undoubtedly, we, like Peter, know our business too, don't we? But sometimes, sometimes we know it just a little bit too well. We know our child isn't educated enough or old enough to do a particular job or to enjoy a particular responsibility. Or that our brother is too busy to ask for a favor or that our neighbor doesn't care to help us or that our, we ourselves aren't skilled enough to do what everyone's asking us to do. We know these things about ourselves and about others. And then what happens when we know these things? We feel frustrated and alone. We feel inadequate and stuck. And we believe that what is being asked of us, asked of us as individuals or, or as part of a group, will not pan out. It's just not gonna work out that way. And we don't wanna try again. We don't wanna risk it. Or, have one more disappointment, one more failure. We've had enough. I know some people whose lives are miserable because for years they've refused to risk any failure, any disappointment. They have resources, 
but they don't use them. Skills, but they don't develop them. Dreams, but they don't follow them. Gifts, but they don't share them. They know what's what. They know their business and they are not about to be instructed by anybody else. You know who they are and who others are and what the situation is. And they are locked in by that knowledge, afraid to ask, afraid to reach out, afraid to go beyond the familiar because in the end, they already have it all figured out how it's gonna pan out. And they know that there is just no point to doing what's being asked of them, that there's no point in going beyond that place where the fish are normally caught. Because if in the normal places there aren't anything, then how much less will there be in the places where fish are almost never caught? Put into the deep water and let down your nets, Jesus says. Well, that's all very fine, Jesus, but we've tried our best all night. We've tried it and it just didn't work. But because you say so, Jesus, I'll do as you've asked. When I was a young woman, a young mom living in Hudson, Ohio, another young woman in our church went to the church council and suggested that we start a young mom's club, one that would meet once a month so that moms could have a social time and support one another with ideas of raising their children. What do you think the council said to that? Come on, what do you think? We tried it before, didn't work. And they were right, they had tried it before. They had done their best several times, in fact, in recent years, and it didn't work. Nobody was interested, nobody came. But the council said, if she wanted to try, it was up to her. She had their blessing, but please, they added, don't be disappointed when nothing happens. The church had, in those days, on average, maybe a hundred people coming on a Sunday. 40 or 50 of them were approaching or past retirement age and about 15 of them were little kids. The first meeting of Mothers in Richmond had eight women. Eight women who came to sit together, put their kids in the middle of the room and they decided they were going to clip coupons and um, balance their checkbooks. The two things they didn't like to do, but they did it together. Well, work got out. And the second month, there was 12 women there. And in several months, there were 45 moms there. And once they started coming on a Wednesday, they wanted to see their friends on Sunday. And it Continued that way until I left the church to become an associate pastor down in North Canton. We had a great time together, and because of that time together, many other lives of our community were touched. We started doing reaching out, and we worked with the battered women's shelter, and we brought things for women who needed things for their that were homeless or had been their lives had been uprooted and we brought things for their children. And everyone became more alive, more confident, more united, and church attendance started to rise, in part be because of the success of that small little mom's group. Now, I know that mom's groups is not the answer to every, everything. You know, though, that there is truth in the old proverb that the family that plays together stays together or maybe it's praise, but it's also plays. Put out into the deep waters and let your nets down for a catch, Jesus says. What's the point? Well, the point's this. Sometimes we need to be stimulated by someone who is outside our frame of reference. Sometimes we need to listen to another point of view. Sometimes we need to risk just one more failure and go out and do what common sense says 
can't be done and to try what we know just not going to work. Sometimes we just need to head out into the deep waters and let our nets down for no better reason than Jesus asked us to do it. Pastor Jim Penhell writes about today's gospel reading this way. He says, the image strikes me in today's gospel is not about fishing, but about the reluctance of Simon to break out of the ordinary and his everyday ways of thinking and doing. He says, I've always been attracted to Simon Peter because he's like so many of us. Well, at least me. Despite verse 10, I don't think it's being suggested that our mission is going is to put out bait and catch unsuspecting fish who might be curious enough to nibble. I think the reading might suggest that we should be willing to set the familiar aside and be unafraid to try new waters. Jesus didn't come simply to make each one of us into some kind of metaphorical fisherman, catching souls with a line of faith so that they could be displayed in some trophy case. I know a lot of evangelicals proudly tell you how many souls they've caught. But I think he came so each one of us might have an abundant life a full and rich life, a life in which we know and experience and share the love of God, a love that conquers the sting of death and ensures that in the end, our labors won't be in vain, no matter how many days our nets came up empty. To achieve that kind of life, we have to do one thing. We have to recognize that our knowledge and our experience isn't equal to God's. We have to recognize that God's ways are superior to our, our ways and that his wisdom is greater. His timing is better, his counselor more life-giving than our own. As Isaiah and Peter each acknowledge in their own ways in today's readings that God is greater than they are and that they are in need of God's grace and God's love. So too, we, we have to acknowledge our need our need and, our, and God's ability to meet that need. Our nets may come up empty for days in a row, but if we're open to God, if we're willing to listen and try new things, if we're willing to venture out onto the deep water or simply if we're willing to do it because Christ asked us to do over and over again, some of the things we tried before and giving, given up on, if we do that, our nets will in the end be filled and filled abundantly. God is able to speak through us, even though we might be a people of unclean lips. And God is able to make our nets overflow, even though we failed before. God is able and God is willing to help us. God is able and God calls us to share the message. The message that through listening to him and following him, there comes abundance from where before there was just nothing. God's grace makes all things new. It makes us who we're supposed to be. Heed the instructions that God gives to you here in the scriptures and here in your hearts and all will be better than you can even imagine today. For as you venture out into those deep waters and labor hard to let down your nets, you will discover the fullness of life, a life which God is with you to accomplish his will through you. And all God's children said. Whom shall God send? Who will go for God's people? Here we are. God is counting on us. Let us share our gifts and our offerings in answer to God's call. Our morning offering will now be received.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Increase the strength of these gifts and the strength of our ministries, O oh God. Expand the nets of our love that we may reach deeply and share abundantly. In Christ's name we pray. Let us pray. Loving God, like Peter and Andrew, James and John, we sometimes feel discouraged. We work hard at what we do. We care for our boats. We tend our nets. We batten down the hatches when we see seas get rough. Yet still, sometimes our labor seems to be in vain. Help us not to be discouraged but rather grant that we might hear your voice, Lord, and accept your direction and venture forth again in obedience to your word. Guide us to the deep waters where your, the catch you have for us lies waiting and strengthen our hands for the work it requires. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, we know that you seek messengers today as you sought them in the day of Isaiah. You call us as you called Peter and later Paul to follow in the paths of Christ Jesus and to bring to you all who are in need. Cleanse us, Lord, as you cleanse them and touch us with coals from your altar. Lift us up from our knees where we fall before you. Pour your grace upon us and help us to remember that it is your purpose and your power to which we bear witness, not our own. As you filled the nets of the disciples, O oh Lord, we ask that you fill the nets that we catch, cast in your direction. Grant that our prayers for healing might be answered. Grant that our work for justice might lead to a more equitable sharing of what the world affords. Grant that our words of forgiveness might bring reconciliation, that our acts of compassion might satisfy those in need and that our way of being might prompt others to praise and glorify your name. Grant, O oh Lord, a resurrection of faith, a faith that's radiant in the knowledge of your victory over sin and death a faith that is confident in your care and your love. Bless us now, we pray with joy for all those who call out on your name, those who labor as you have directed. Bless too those we hold before you now. We lift up Graham, Tim, Bud and Anita, and Pat and Anita, Lord, in your mercy. We remember Debbie. Judy, Sue, and Ray Weekly, Lord, in your mercy. We lift Kelly Johnson, Chris, Mary, Barbara, and Janet, Lord, in your mercy. We remember Ernie, Jean Grigalunas, and Jennifer Robeson, Lord, in your mercy. We lift up Deb Herman, Charles Tripp, Beth Green, Lord, in your mercy. And we remember Diane, Sue, Betty, Janet, Ernie, Tom, and Ellie, Lord, in your mercy. And we lift before you the families of Ken Hayjack, John Anconda, and Jason Roach, Lord, in your mercy. We ask all of this in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our brother who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debtors as we forgive. It's a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come into the deep waters of God's love. Cast your nets into the mir miraculous waters of Christ's grace. Drink of the living water. Eat of the bread of life. For this is the table of abundant love. I invite you to rise if you're able. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are as close to us as breath, that your love is constant and unfailing, and we thank you for all that sustains life, and especially for your son, Jesus Christ, who teaches us how to live an ethic of justice and peace, and for the promise of transformation made ma manifest in his life and death and resurrection. We ask you bless this bread and this cup. Through this meal, make a, us the body of Christ, that we may join with you in promoting the well-being of all of your creation. Amen. We remember the night when the disciples and Jesus had their last meal. Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks. And he shared it and he broke it saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the symbol of the broken bread, we participate in the life of Christ and dedicate ourselves to being his disciples. And in the same way, after giving thanks, he gave it, he poured the cup and he passed it to the disciples and he said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for many. Do this as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. In the symbol of the cup, we participate in the new life that Christ brings. Let us come to the table now, for all is ready.
the body of Christ broken for you. The cup of blessing poured out for you. Let us pray. We give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your table, strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, as we have been fed by the seed that became grain and then became bread. May we go out into the world to plant seeds of justice, transformation, and hope. Amen. I invite you to rise and join me in our closing hymn, I'm Gonna Live So God Can Use Me. And it's a new song, but it's a real easy song. So I'm going to ask Nancy to play it through once. And I hope you will sing. And I even challenge you to clap. I know it's not our, our way, but Paul, I know you can get us rousing in doing this. All right, let us go forth being for the world, the body of Christ, reaching out, welcoming all and growing together in faith, hope and love. Let us go in peace, shall we? Mm -hmm.